that in fact, yes, we live in a world of cascading crisis. And it's not that, that each crisis is independent of the other. They feed each other, yes? And cascading crisis is cascading inequalities. And we know that because the distribution of the impact of the crisis are not symmetric. They are asymmetric by nature. And so it's very important what we are doing here uh, today because in a way we are trying not to forget of the long term. Yes, we are trying to see how we deal with the crisis in a way that won't derail the objectives, the vision, the goals that we have for the long term. I remember always, uh, and people that work with me uh, know that I always remember one thing that I, as a young official coming to the government, a wise man in the government told me. And he told me that it is so often that we forget that the short and the long term start at the same time. <laughs> We think that the long term is a su succession of short terms, but there is no long term that is only a succession of short terms. It needs vision, yes? It needs strategy to think about the long term. And, you know, it's true that the uh, sustainable development goals are not a perfect instrument or the Paris Agreement, but right now, President, is the only call that we have for global solidarity in the world. And I think that it's very important to rescue that from that point of view. Each country will have to make their own choices and strategies according to their national priorities and to their historical development and to their concrete circumstances. But at the end, it sets a common collective action that we, are, we also need in the world. Because no country alone can deal with the global problems that we are living today. We need cooperation, we need partnership, and, uh, and we, need, we need a common understanding of the problems that we are facing. So going to, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the, th the theme of today, uh, let me say that it's difficult to imagine that a year has passed since we had the World Investment for Development Alliance. And thank you so much to our partners for the organization of this event today. And let me say that I, I, I really feel honored to be here with the Minister of France and with the Minister of Egypt and with the President of, of Timor-Leste. Uh, because you are very important players in the global, in the global arena. And let's hope that uh, 2023 will be better than 2022. But the, the truth is that we will need to work very hard for that to happen, yes? We, we are now like a marathon runner uh, on a journey to the finishing line of sustainable development. Yes, since 2015, we have trained hard, set clear goals, and made hard-won progress. But in the last few years, massive obstacles have appeared on the way. We had a pandemic, a cost of living crisis, a war in Ukraine, a new geopolitical trade order. Basically, everything that could have gone wrong has gone wrong. And as a result, our finishing line looks increasingly out of reach. So our poor marathon runner is now feeling trapped in a race she feels she cannot win. And this is the biggest problem of all, because if we fail, if we completely lose sight of the 2030 finish line, we will still be running, we will still be tired, we will still be thirsty, but we will have forgotten where we are going. This is why the world needs all the friends and allies in the world investment community that it can get. Because true investment at scale are the only way to really get back in the race. And I want to make three points with respect to what we have to focus on. One, the first, we need to reverse the current investment trend. Global foreign direct investment 
are in decline. According to our latest data, falling by over 30% from the first to the second quarter of last year. 30% going, going down. Unfortunately also, this negative trend is heavily impacting cross-border investment in climate change mitigation and adaptation. The number of new project announcements in the first three quarters of 2022 was 7% lower than in 2021 in mitigation and 12% lower in adaptation sectors. This is a big problem given that mitigation projects account for the lion's share, 94% of international climate investment. This is particularly concerning given that climate change investment had been on an upward trend since the adoption of the SDGs in 2015. So this is the reversal of the trend. And we saw a strong acceleration in 2021, especially in renewable energy. And Rachel is here with me. She knows much more than me about that. <laughs> This boom was supported by post-COVID stimulus investment packages, especially in Europe. You, you were talking, President, about printing money. QE was printing money. <laughs> and there were, a, you know, a strong, really push for, for investment in those packages, also in the US. And there were loose con financial conditions for international project finance. But now that momentum is really at risk. And we are very uh, deep reversals of this trend. Our second priority is not only to reverse that trend, but we need to reverse that trend in the right direction. We need the flow to go not from south to north, but from north to south. And rising interest rates meant that money left the global south last year at record speed. If we sum what countries have lost in foregone income, dwindling foreign reserves, and global investment outflows, we are talking about over half a trillion dollars in the most conservative estimate. Furthermore, developed economies account for two-thirds of international project finance deals and greenfield investments in renewables. So Europe alone, dear minister, and, and we are glad that Europe is investing so heavily. The problem is that there is no investment elsewhere. Yes? Europe alone accounts for more than half of renewable projects in the world. North America and developing Asia Second, Latin America and the Caribbean, third, and Africa, fourth. So to rechannel this flow, many things need to happen, both at the macro level, through structural reform in the international financial system, but also at the, at the micro level, by helping countries plan, propose, and execute shovel-ready projects related to sustainable development. And the other part of this is multilateral development banks, yes, that have a crucial role to play here. We need the multilateral development banks, the development banks, the regional development banks to invest at scale, leverage resources, and unlock markets and projects. Uh, they should lead a new round of capitalizations, but also learn more from what they already have. The potential of the MDBs to recycle and use, for example, special drawing rights is huge e and could galvanize the international community to create legal mechanisms to do that. 